Welcome to this webinar series, which is all about the recently published UK guidelines for HIV PEP published in 2021. I'm Dr. Krisha Patel, and I'm a sexual offences examiner working in sexual assault referral centres. In this video, we are going to go over a few scenarios to help us understand the risk of transmission of HIV. Scenario one, A is a man who has had receptive anal intercourse with B, who is a man, without a condom. B is HIV positive and he is not taking any treatment for his HIV. Using the tables provided in the BASH guidelines and the risk of transmission equation from the last webinar episode, calculate the estimated risk of HIV transmission from B to A. Pause the video now to perform your calculation and we'll go over the answers in the next slide. The risk of transmission equals the risk that the source is HIV positive with a detectable HIV viral load times the risk per exposure. Using the table from the BASH guidelines, you can see that the estimated risk of HIV transmission per exposure from a HIV positive individual who is not on any suppressive antiretroviral therapy during receptive anal intercourse is one in 90. Therefore, the risk of HIV transmission is one, which is the risk that the source is HIV positive with a detectable HIV viral load, as we already know that B is HIV positive, not on any treatment, multiplied by the risk per exposure, which we can see is one in 90 on this table here. And that is approximately 1.1%. If receptive anal intercourse happens twice in a short period of time, then we need to add the two exposures together to get a cumulative risk of HIV transmission during that period of time. So if receptive anal intercourse happens twice with the same man, the risk would be two in 90, which is approximately 2.2%. Thankfully, there is a very useful summary table of PEP prescribing recommendations in the BASH guidelines. In the last scenario, you can see that the BASH guidelines would recommend PEP be offered when there's receptive anal intercourse with someone who has HIV and a viral load that is unknown or detectable. And it's recommended because in this case, the benefits of PEP are likely to outweigh the risks of PEP. So PEP should be given unless there is a clear reason not to give PEP. Let's look at scenario two. A is a man who has had insertive anal intercourse with B, a man, without a condom, ejaculation occurs, and A is not circumcised. B is a homosexual male living in London. The HIV status of B is unknown and it is unknown whether he is circumcised or not. Calculate the estimated risk of HIV transmission from B to A. So pause the video now to perform your calculation and we'll go over the answer in the next slide. So the risk of transmission is equal to the risk that the source is HIV positive with a detectable HIV viral load. And in this case, we do not know the HIV status of B. So we have to use the tables in the BASH guidelines and we can see that for gay and bisexual men, living in London is 32.1 per 1,000 people. 
And then we have to multiply that with the risk per exposure. And this is taken from the BASH table on insertive anal intercourse risk per exposure. So if there's insertive anal intercourse and A is not circumcised, as you can see, circumcision is beneficial when we're talking about HIV transmission, as the risk of HIV transmission is much lower when somebody is circumcised. But in this scenario, A was not circumcised and the risk per exposure is one in 161. Therefore, the risk of transmission is 32.1 per 1,000, which is this figure here, multiplied by the risk per exposure, which is 1 in 161. And that works out to be 0.02%, which is very low. In this scenario, the BASH summary table of PEP prescribing recommendations says to consider offering PEP. So that's insertive anal sex. And we're talking about men who have sex with men, which is a higher risk group when there's unknown HIV status. The definition of consider in these guidelines states the risk of HIV transmission is low the risk-benefit balance of PEP is less clear. The risk should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis, taking into consideration factors shown in footnotes C and D. Footnotes C and D are at the bottom of the table in the full BASH guidance document, and they explain the factors that should influence decision-making. And these factors include more detailed knowledge of local HIV prevalence within the index case population, breaches in the mucosal barrier, such as genital ulcer disease and anal or vaginal trauma following sexual assault or first intercourse, or multiple episodes of exposure within a short period of time, e.g. group sex, or when there is another sexually transmitted infection in either partner. It's also worth mentioning that the latest BASH PEP 2021 guidance has introduced this new category, which is called generally not recommended. And in the previous guidance, this said consider the definition of generally not recommended is when the risk of HIV transmission is very low and the potential toxicity and inconvenience of taking PEP every day for 28 days and attending all the appointments and blood tests for follow-up is likely to outweigh the benefit unless there is a clear specific extenuating factor which increases the risk. So again, you need to look at footnotes C and D to help you decide whether to offer PEP in these cases. However, BASH guidance says that they anticipate PEP should very rarely be given when the risk has been assessed and discussed in these cases where it says generally not recommended. So in the older 2015 guidance, they used to have this table which said, if the risk estimate was greater than one in 1,000, then you should offer PEP. If the risk of HIV transmission was estimated to be between one in 1,000 and one in 10,000, then you should consider offering PEP. And if the risk estimate for HIV transmission was less than one in 10,000, PEP was not recommended. So these thresholds were not evidence-based and have therefore been removed from the 2021 BASH guidelines. However, the guidelines do recognise that they may assist services in making decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you for listening. And if you found this session useful, then please check out the rest of the series and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.